Okay, our Grey Cup Week can cover a coverage continues on a football Friday, and our next guest is a little like me. You never really know where he's gonna pop up, so I'm very excited to welcome in coaching legend Jeff Reinbold, who I just learned this week. The code name for you is Sun God. That's the code. Did you know that, coach? They call you the Sun God. Uh, I, I get that. That was the Jerry Glanville creation when we worked together at the University of Hawaii. It's stuck. It's stuck. <laughs> They're still calling you that, coach. Are you a great cup week? You must be. This is your kind of thing. No, I'm not. I'm actually at home because uh, I wanted to get home and spend a week at home. I've got to go to London on Monday to do fulfill my responsibilities with Sky. And, uh, you know, so I'll be doing the NFL game start next week. But I, you know, again, obviously anybody that's involved with the CFL, any Canadian fan, any Canadian, certainly. This is the biggest week in, in the CFL, and I think it's really the best week in Canadian sport. Oh, I don't think you get too many arguments with that. And are, are you one of those guys, I used to get it from BT all the time, Brendan Tamman. If we're not in the Grey Cup, I don't want to be there. And I, I get it. I get it. Are you one of those guys, or how do you feel about that? Well, there's always, there's always a certain element of that. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a CFL fan first, you know, and I was a CFL fan way before I was a CFL coach so you know I, I think the whole week and you know to have the game in Hamilton Hamilton like Regina those are those are football town and you know, I know that they're going to have a great week you know of, of on and off the field it's going to be an absolutely dynamite week that the great cup committee's done a great job of you know giving everybody that would come something that they can latch on to something that they can enjoy and then, you know, that'll all culminate with the game on, on Sunday. Uh, well, we got a lot to get to. I'm glad you're here in this segment. It gives us a little more time, Coach. Um, How is it different from any other week as a coach? Well, I know certainly when, you know, the biggest thing is who handles the distractions of the week the best. And that begins as soon as you win the Eastern or Western final because then – you know, you do all your preliminary planning, all your preliminary logistics and all of that. But, you know, it's now it becomes how do you get families in? How do you get tickets? How do you know all of those kinds of things that tend to take a player's focus away from the game? And it's going to be interesting this week to watch how this unfolds. You know, who does the best job of it? Obviously, Winnipeg, you would think, would have the advantage because they've been there so many times. They understand, you know, they played in the Great Cup in Hamilton. They won one there. Uh, Montreal, this is all you know new to them, and so I think it's going to come down to who really handles the distractions of the week the best. And you know, when you look back at 109 prior Grey Cups, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like the best team generally wins. I, I'm with you on that distraction thing and everything, but overall, the best team usually wins. Agree or disagree? Well, I, I, I you know what, 109. I'm an old guy, but I ain't that old. Come on now, Rod. You're killing me with that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, you can look at the history. You can look at the history, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I think this is what's going to be key in this game, really. Uh, I think, you know, both of these coaches do a great job, both, both Jason and Mike. And, you know, always in the CFL, the game comes down to the play of the quarterbacks. And, you know, when, when you look at it that way, you certainly have to say that, you know, Calaris gives you advantage in Winnipeg. But I think the guy that's going to be the most key in this game, I really truly believe this, is going to be Oliveira, the, the ta tailback from Winnipeg. Because what Winnipeg, I'm sure, wants to do is they want to get on top early. And, you know, here's the, here's the kind of the factor that a lot of people won't consider, but it's because they have never played in the playoffs in Tim Hortons Field. That wind in that stadium at this time of year can be the deciding factor in a lot of cases because it's so hard to move the ball into it. You can't punt into it. You can't kick into it. And so I think the team that gets on top first, who wins the coin toss and takes the ball early and chooses to get on top first? Because certainly when you look at the two teams, Montreal's not built to play from behind. You know, they, if they get behind, they're going to need their, like last week, they're going to need their defense and their special teams to make huge plays to get them back. Because I don't know if they have the kind of big strike capabilities that Winnipeg does. And I think for Winnipeg to get on top and then 
when they're into the win, to just be able to pound the ball with Olivier, which I think they're capable of doing because Montreal, uh, they do a great job on defense, but you can, can run a little bit, and I, that's been shown. And, you know, how is he going to – how is how are they going to stop the run if, if uh, all of a sudden they're getting a whole bunch of big personnel and, and, and running between the tackles? They're going to have to try and blitz it. And, and again, that puts you in one-on-one coverage, and we've seen what Kolaris can do when he, when he gets one-on-one outside. I'm certainly no coach, but I've been covering this league a long time, and I know that blocking, tackling, and turnovers are going to be a big factor. And the reason I bring that up is momentum is a really big thing, Jeff. If you need any more no illustration question. this time of year, this is it. Montreal's won seven in a row coming in. The Bombers have won five right. in a row. And I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about the Argos. They didn't play a meaningful game for 57 days. And they got down early in the East Final, and they couldn't come back. That had to have been a factor why Toronto's not playing this weekend. Well, I think, I think it, no question about that. And here's the little, with again, the X factor. If you're looking for X factors for Montreal, is Letcher, the new the kid that they brought in with about five games left as a returner. That guy is electric. I mean, he can hurt you. And we saw what he did. You know, he, he, he took one back on us. He took one back in the East Final for a touchdown that really broke Toronto's back. And his ability to create field position, I think, is going to be key in the game. You look on the other side, Winnipeg can counter with, you know, some really good special teams play of their own. Hallett blocked the punt last year, last week, excuse me, for a touchdown. And, you know, again, to those kinds of plays, those big play game, uh, you know, they can factor in a, in a close game. And I think both of these teams are really, really, really kicking game. And both of them have electric returners because, you know, again, you see how big field position is in our game. It's so much different. I went to the Bills Monday night game against the Broncos. And, you know, so the special teams now have been basically – neutered in the nfl because of all the rules changes and the way the kickers can just kick it into the end zone and there's no return and you know i think there were three there were three punt returns in the whole game because the punters just the fair catch rule just nullifies great returners in our league you can't do that you've got to put the ball in the returner's hand and generian grant and, and electric returner so i wouldn't be surprised to see a, a you know a return for if not a touchdown certainly a big play to create field position for a team. It's not uncommon. It's not uncommon. Now, you've been coaching for so long. You've coached in all conditions. The fact that it's going to be above zero, above 32, whatever you Americans say, and nice conditions is a good thing for the, both teams. No question. I, I think so. You know, and Rod, I, you know, we've, we played in the Grey Cup in Regina that week. It was so bitterly, bitterly cold, and the cold became a factor in the game. We played in the, in the wind in uh, 2019, or excuse me, 21, against Winnipeg, and the wind was a tremendous, tremendous difference in the game. And who manages, and it's not the, it's not in, at I, at, excuse me, at, at Tim Hortons, it's not so much the cold, it's the wind, because when that wind is going, it is like a, it's like a wind tunnel in that stadium. And, you know, it really makes it difficult on the punters and the kickers. And, you know, it can be the factor. And that's why it's so important that when you get the wind, and I think this is going to be really, really key. Watch this in the game. When you have the wind at your back, who goes up tempo and tries to maximize the number of snaps they get with the wind? And then also when you're into the wind, who slows the game down and, and goes right to two seconds on the play clock every play because you can you know you can really do a great job of managing in the win if you understand how important a factor it is in that stadium we've both been in Ivor Wynn and Tim Hortons a million times we've heard about the wind in Hamilton is it not true they flipped from north south to east west or vice versa when they built a new place and the wind is worse now is that true that's what well, I heard it, it, I think, it, you know, again, it's always, listen to, you know, first year I was at Hamilton, Paul Osbaldison worked with, worked with us, and Ozzy was a master of the wind in, in the old Ivor wind. And he mentioned the same thing, that when they turned the stadium around, it's, it's really created 
Now, when it comes from the north, it runs right down the field. And the same thing when it comes from the south, it runs right down the field. And those are the prevailing winds in, in Hamilton. So when it comes off the escarpment and it blows through that stadium, you better have a kicker and a punter who can deal with that. And again, it's, it's, you can say what you want, but it is a huge factor in the game. And how you manage it, how you deal with it, how you understand the clock and how all of those things work, I, I think that's where if anybody has an advantage, I think that's Winnipeg's advantage because Mike's been in that stadium so many times. You want to uh, make a pick or no? <laughs> Absolutely not, because it's the Grey Cup. And you cannot <laughs> predict it. You know, and I mean, and, and here's the case in point. Like we we went in in 2019, and we were a 15 and three football team, and we were going in to play a Winnipeg team that we had beaten twice during the regular season. And I thought Orlando did a great job of preparing our team that week, and we got in there and. I think it was about the third play of the game. Dane throws an in cut and it tips off of one of our receiver's hands. They intercept it, run it down inside, get a short field, jump on top. And all of a sudden, you know, we were fighting for our lives and could never turn the momentum back in our favor. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that, you know, Willie Jefferson just took over and he has the ability to do that. You saw it last week. I think, again, that's another key factor. How is Montreal going to deal with Willie Jefferson? Because he's a game wrecker, still is at this point in his career. Oh man, this was a lovely surprise that you're on today. There's a million questions from the viewers now. They're all they're all queuing in that we got Coach Reinbold and I, we don't have time now to go through all of them. I got one just out of my own curiosity because you're here. Ken Dorsey fired as the offensive coordinator. You might have known him from Toronto, right? Former backup quarterback, fired by the Bills. Yep. And I saw this debate yep. raging. They're like, they're top three or four in every offensive stat. Yet, I see the other side of it. Josh Allen's regressing, and you can't fire Josh Allen. You were there uh, the other night, you said. What do you feel about that yep. move? Well, I I'm going to tell you something, Rod. It's what we all sign up for in this business. And, you know... The reality of it is that the temperature in to the point with, with Ken Dorsey. I mean, in the last month, because we're so close to Buffalo, you, you know, there's a spillover on WGR, and you listen to the talk shows, and, and it, you know, they were after him for a month. And you could, statistically, it doesn't make sense. But, you know, once they start to beat the drum and you're not playing well, somebody's going to go and it's not going to be a player typically. And it's certainly not going to be a guy that you're playing, you know, millions of dollars in a guaranteed contract to. It's going to be a coach. It's, it's kind of the nature of the business, but I'll tell you this, I watched the game and you know, the first ball Josh throws is out in the flat and cooks, catches it and gets hit and turns it over. And then, you know, they, he runs an in cut and you know, he throws a perfect ball, right. And Gabe Davis clanks it off his hands and Simmons intercepts it. And then they got 12 guys on the field on a field goal at the end of the game. You know, I mean, he didn't do any of those things, but somebody's got to pay the price, and that's just the way it is. And, and it's typically going to be a coordinator. Could, it will be the first one to go. But, you know, I, I feel, do I feel for Ken Dorsey? Yes. Do, is he a good football coach? Obviously, yes, or he wouldn't be in that job. But for the Bills, they need to shake it up. They're 5-5, five and five, and it, it, you know, think about this, Rod. They've got Kansas City, Philadelphia, Miami, and Dallas all coming in the back seven. And if they don't win, I'm I, I'm serious. If they're five and five. If they don't get the nine wins, they're not going to be a they're not going to be in the playoffs. And and uh, so it's desperation time in in Buffalo right now. Uh, okay, now you're explaining it. Yeah, he'll be just be the first of many out the door. Is kind of is the, with the sense that I'm getting. I had an old hockey coach friend, the, Terry Simpson, that said the more you get fired, the more desensitized you get to it. Is that true? Yep, I think it's true. And, and the great Bum Phillip, one of my all-time favorites, said this. There's only two types of coaches. Them that's been fired and, and them that's fired. Oh, you just get used to it if you're in this business. Okay, last one. It's a fun one from John in Calgary. John Burns, he says, was Toronto cursed by 16-2? and two? The only other 16-2 and two team lost as well, 89 Eskimos. Uh, I just put the, do you believe in cursing?
curses and stuff? Was it not a good thing to have the best regular season curses, record ever do, in Argo history? I do believe it because, you know, the hardest thing to do with a football team, and I don't care if you're 16 and 2 or 2 and 16, is to not listen to the noise, to not hear the noise from the outside. And, you know, w once they got to about 14 wins, now the big speculation in, you know, on Three Down Nation and in this .ca and all of it was, is this the greatest football team, Canadian football team in history? And all, you know, it's hard to shelter your players from that, you know, and you get the, you know, you get success flu and all of a sudden you get a bad case of success flu and you get bounced out of the playoffs in the first round. Yeah, well, what does Saban call it? Rat poison, as you That's know. Exactly. Uh, Coach, That's again, exactly right. This was, this was a wonderful uh, surprise. Thanks for this. Keep in touch and enjoy the big game. Enjoy your time at home. Well, we will, Rod, and I look forward to being with you guys all the way through the playoffs and up. Well. Oh, good. Absolutely. Let's get a sponsor this time. We got our sales guys watching for sure. Thanks, Coach. All right. Jeff Reinbold uh, All right, thank you. checking in from across the pond.